Uh, let's look at now for a typical reinforced concrete section, how we uh, do the analysis. Okay. So, as we have seen, first the loads are acting on the structural beam. Then we do structural analysis. We find the bending moment diagram. Now, for one particular cross sections, once we know the bending moment, as a design engineer, what we do is we make sure that we put enough amount of steel and also the dimensions of the beam have to be adequately proportioned. And now that I am giving a section with the B and H and certain reinforcement, let us see for this particular section, how do we do the analysis uh, to get your moment and curvature behavior of this particular cross section. Okay. Now let us see. So what we actually do is, uh, we, we, we have seen from your uh, thing, strain distribution is always going to be linear. The only thing is, for that particular strain distributions, your materials can be either in the elastic state or it can be in the inelastic region. Okay, So it can be in the nonlinear region also. So that means, so what we are saying is, if I assume this curvature, now again, what is curvature we have seen? It is nothing but epsilon by y. Right, strain divided by y. So, for example, if I know the strain at this location, what is this distance y from the neutral axis? So, if this is epsilon, so what is this curvature? It is nothing but your slope of the strain distribution. So, p is nothing but epsilon by y. So, that is what we have taken here. Okay. So, either you can do it uh, by considering. So, if I know strain of a fiber and the distance of the fiber from the uh, neutral axis, I can calculate curvature as nothing but epsilon by Y. So that's what we have established as a relationship initially. Right? Now, so this is your strain distribution. So one thing is also to note down here is depending upon, I'm going to keep changing this epsilon c. So you can see again, you go back to your parabolic curve, you get this kind of thing, right? So let's see if I can okay. So this uh, we know Fc and epsilon c. Depending upon whether I'm here or here or here, my strain at the top fiber is going to change. So you can see that if I am at this location, we know that it is 0 0.002 for concrete strength less than 40 megapascal. If I'm at this location, it could be 0 0.0035. If I'm at this location, it could be 0 0.001. So now what we are actually doing is this is in compression. Okay. So this is in compression. And this is in tension. Okay. And uh, uh, the sign convention is compression is taken as positive, tension here is taken as negative. So that is why I've drawn compressive strains on the right side and tensile strains on the left side of this line. Okay. So this is a line. So you can take this as negative and this is positive. Okay. Now there is this. Right, so this is the sign convention that you take. Now, once we uh, have taken this, so okay, this is epsilon c, right? So, depending upon the level of epsilon c that I'm doing, either 0 0.001 or 0 0.002, right, and 0 0.0035, your shape of your stress strain, uh, stress curve is going to change. If I'm going to be at point, let's say point not not one, it will be basically it will be like like this only. It will be triangular. Right. However, if I'm taking it at point double zero three five, okay. If I'm at this level, now what actually you have done is you have rotated the stress strain curve by ninety degree, and that is acting perpendicular to the cross section. So if I'm taking it at point double, let's say if I take this as point double zero three five, and you will find that if I rotate this particular uh, stress strain curve by 90 degree, then what the shape, basically only this is the shape that is going to, okay, so basically this is the shape that is going to be effective, right? So that's why you get this kind of uh, curve. If I take epsilon is going to point up in shape, right? And the maximum value will be somewhere below. So this will be your maximum stress, F prime C. It will not be happening at the topmost fiber because now the topmost fiber stress is going to be less. Okay. We know that this is where you are having F prime C. However, if I'm taking strain of this value, my stress at the topmost fiber is not going to be F prime C. 
that f prime c is going to be corresponding to a strain of 0.002 is where I'm going to get f prime c. Okay, and this is basically we are doing it at this location. At the top, I'm going to have fc, some level of stress, depending upon what kind of strain that is there. Okay, now you can see that there's going to be small portion below the neutral axis that is going to contribute in tension also. But we know that concrete contribution in tension is going to be very small. So this can be neglected to be or assumed to be zero or it's going to be very, very small. Again, this is valid only if I'm dealing with normal concrete, which does not have fibers or, you know, if it's a special concrete or ultra high performance concrete or a self-consolidating concrete, then this tension contribution is also going to be very significant, which we cannot ignore. That is what I'm trying to say. For most of the applications, we deal with normal concrete, which doesn't have fibers. So this tension contribution can be taken to be zero. Okay. And this is your strain level in the steel. Accordingly, you can also calculate what are the stress in the steel. So you can see that this is steel. Okay. And this is your concrete in compression. Okay. This is concrete in compression. So depending upon what uh, you have, so concrete is going to contribute in compression and steel is going to contribute in tension. Okay, let me erase this. So again, one thing is, so to do this moment curvature calculation, first I need to assume the strain, the top strain, okay, at epsilon c. And then I assume a linear strain profile, but at the same time, I don't know what would be my neutral axis, where the strain is going to be zero, okay. That I have to also assume, okay. But then for each strain value from the constitutive equation, I know the stress. Then I can also calculate what are the forces. Now, how do we get your forces? Forces is nothing but, now you see here, this stress is actually acting perpendicular to the cross section. So if I'm able to integrate the stresses and over the area where it is acting, then I can get my CC. Similarly, for the small area, of concrete that is contributing in tension. So this TC will come and this, you know that it will be nearly equal to zero. So we can take it to be TC to be zero. And TS will be nothing but basically the amount of steel multiplied by FS. So if I can find FS, then I know what is AS, where is the area of steel. Area of steel multiplied by stress will give me what is the force. Now only thing is CC calculating is quite involved. Okay, if I, depending upon what is my epsilon C, the shape of your stress curve in compression for concrete, either it could be triangular or it could be parabolic, right? So it is going to, the shape of your stress curve in compression is going to keep changing depending upon what strain that I'm fixing it at the top fiber. So that is why it becomes difficult. If you go back in IS code, it gives you one stress curve, okay? So, that is valid only for epsilon c equal to 0 0.0035. But for me, for doing moment curvature analysis, I want to do calculations for the entire range. When top fiber strain, when it is changing from, let's say, like what you have done, when epsilon c uh, changes, epsilon c should vary from very small value of, let's say, 0.0001 to 0 0.0035. So for the entire range, I want to calculate what are the moment resistance that is coming. So then the shape of your compressive stress, stress curve is also going to change. So that is one thing you have to keep it in mind. Right. So now let us see. Uh, so CC is basically stress in the concrete multiplied area of enclosed. And TS is stress in the steel multiplied area of six. And TC, we take it to be zero. Okay. Right. Now, what are the equations for any uh, stress? Again, the forces have to be in equilibrium. Now, we are dealing with beam, which doesn't have any axial force. So, axial forces, there is no external axial force. So, CC should be equal to TS. Anyway, we have taken the TC to be zero. Concrete contribution, concrete is, tensile contribution in con of concrete is going to be zero. So, CC should be equal to TS from your force equilibrium. Now, next is from equations of compatibility. We know that strain distribution is linear. So from this strain distribution is linear and we can see that from this diagram, okay? So you can see that from similar triangle, epsilon C by X 
if I take this as a distance, so what would be this distance? Is nothing but okay. So this distance is d, and this is going to be d minus x. So you can see that from strain diagram. So epsilon c from similar triangle, epsilon c by x should be equal to let's say this as let's say epsilon t. Here I've taken it as epsilon t, or let's put that as epsilon s. Okay. So this becomes your epsilon s by d minus x. Epsilon s is a strain in the steel on the tension steel okay so this is basically nothing but your equations of compatibility we have we have uh, that is your coming from your plane sections remain plane uh, assumption that the vertical lines are going to remain vertical but however it is going to rotate okay this is your strain compatibility relationship so we have seen it in the axial behavior also uh, for any rational analysis we have to satisfy the conditions of equilibrium we need to satisfy the conditions of strain compatibility and the the relationship between stress and strain is established through some constitutive relationship now if i give the strain distribution how do we get your stress it's from your constitutive equation which is your stress strain relationship that what i'm using for concrete we are using hogness state stress strain curve for uh, compression and for steel we are going to use elastic perfectly plastic relationship for this first part of the model of course when we go to the is code calculations the stress strain curves is going to be different that we will talk about it when we get there all right so this is the way that i'm so for each strain that i'm using at the top fiber i can fix a value of a neutral axis and i can find the stress distribution then i can find my force distribution from the assumed force distribution now i can also calculate my moment now what would be the moment so you'll find that the only unknown here is x so i have to assume x so it's not so i have to assume x and make sure that it is also going to satisfy your equations of equilibrium that is your force equilibrium which is concrete in compression should be equal to uh, force uh, that is offered by steel in tension right so now we have to see the constitutive equations so the whole problem is if i assume the value for x then i can make sure that for different values of x i have to i have to choose the value of x where cc is equal to ts once i know that uh, then i can get, get all my internal forces then i can also calculate my moment resistance okay and once for assume x is known and epsilon c is known what is curvature now curvature is nothing but epsilon c by x that's it strain divided by the distance of the fiber at which we are calculating the uh, we are uh, we are assume the strain so the curvature is nothing but epsilon c by x the curvature is nothing but how much the section has actually rotated also right so this we can do now how is how how can we calculate the moment the moment is you know now t c is again taken to be zero no moment i can take that as i can take moment about this point then i can write that as c c multiplied by this distance okay let's say that as lever arm cc times lever arm okay so for any strain distribution if i am able to find out x then i can get the stresses i can get the forces then moment also i can find out and curvature is nothing but epsilon c by x so this is the way we do moment and curvature for one strain that we are taking it at at the top five right now let's see now for this uh Uh, we have seen that uh, uh, the for constitutive relationship for concrete, we are taking it as a Hoeckner uh, stress strain curve, which is a parabolic stress strain curve model. Now, this is uh, you know this is this is the way stress is actually acting. Okay, now uh, over the uh, above the neutral axis, which is in compression, right? And this is your neutral axis. So this is your C, and this is your T, which is AS times FS, like what we have discussed. in the previous part now what is the equal see my my only thing is and now depending upon what level of strain that i am taking as we have discussed in the previous slide if epsilon c at the top fiber if i am taking a very small value of let's say 0.001 or 0.005 then the shape will become pretty much triangular if my uh, top strain if i am taking it as 0.002 Then the shape will become just parabolic. They will not have the descending portion. If I am taking epsilon c as 0.0035, you will get this kind of stress strain curve. 
okay so the shape of stress curve in compression is going to change depending upon what is the strain value that i am assuming it at the top line so it, it is difficult for me to do the integration and find out that concrete contribution in compression so what people have said they have done is so these are witness stress block parameters they said okay don't worry irrespective of whatever is the shape i can convert them into an equivalent rectangular stress block so they call this as this if i somehow we if i can convert this uh, concrete stress block into an equivalent rectangular block it is easy for me to calculate now what is cc if i know this a over which it is acting and if i know this top the stress what i have to take then is nothing but your area of your triangle a multiplied by the stress will give me uh, the compression force c right so that is the idea of deriving rectangular stress block so now we see if i am taking this section and if i am taking this strain and this is going to be a strain in your steel of course the x we don't know you have to, you have to assume value for x right and then what is that we do the, this is your actual uh, sustained curve that you're going to the uh, stress curve that you're going to get so this is your strain and this is your stress okay when you integrate stress multiplied by force you'll get your force now problem is to integrate this and find the value of c it is difficult so what we are going to do is we are going to convert this into an equivalent rectangular stress block so how do we get that i'm going to say that this is going to be replaced with as an equivalent rectangular block with a constant value of alpha times f prime c because once you know the grade of concrete f prime c is fixed let's say if i'm taking 30 megapascal means f prime c 30 is fixed so this the top fiber is always going to be going to have a constant stress of alpha 1 times f prime c and this stress block is going to extend by a distance equal to a which is expressed as beta 1 times your neutral axis depth which is beta 1 x now for this what would be the total force c you can see that you can write that as alpha 1 f prime c i am i am just integrating this area multiplied by beta 1 times x now force we are doing this is stress and it is also acting perpendicular to this cross section so i have to multiply by b so this is the c that i get so if i can find out alpha 1 and beta 1 because x anyway i am going to assume and f prime c is given to you so once alpha 1 and beta 1 is uh, can be calculated i can find out c so for any value of epsilon c if i can express alpha 1 and beta 1 in terms of epsilon c then i can find out c so uh, in that way this rectangular stress block is a very convenient way of calculating compression force of concrete and also it is giving me because if i had fixed this rectangular uh, depth at which it is acting i also know where the c is going to be acting is always c is going to be acting at a distance a by 2 because the centroid of this rectangle is going to be at a distance of a by 2 from the top fiber or from this bottom fiber so the location of c is also easy for me to find out because the location of c is important from calculating moment resistance point of view right so in this way i can find out what is concrete contribution compression initially and also i can find out where is the location of my c that is going to be beneficial for me in calculating moment resistance okay in this way it is easy for me to convert this either uh, triangular or a parabolic uh, stress curve into an equivalent rectangular stress block now i will see how this alpha 1 and beta 1 are actually derived okay now so the condition is okay both of them should be same so what are the conditions if i uh, what i'm saying is this okay let me know this uh, what i'm saying is this is getting equivalent to this okay this and this are equal now if this and this the actual stress variation should be equal to the rectangular stress that what i am assuming so what should be the two conditions the c that what i am getting from actual stress variation should be equal to c what i am calculated from assume the rectangular stress block parameters and also the location of c also should be same if i satisfy that 
uh, then it is uh, uh, it is easy for me to calculate so they have to satisfy okay they have to be equivalent then only it will become equivalent stress block so that is what we are looking at it for the first condition is for equivalent rectangular stress block parameters the criteria one is the resultant forces should be same so what are the resultant it's the concrete force in compression cc so this cc that is coming from your actual parabolic variation should be equal to what is that i am getting from your rectangular stress block parameters now you can see what is cc how do we get your cc in your actual variations if i take the small element as let's say as again you know dy okay and if this fiber if i am taking it at a distance this is your neutral axis okay where you are taking that fiber so if i take that fiber at a distance of y from the neutral axis and if i am taking that small elemental length dy now i can express cc for the actual stress variation as how well. it is integration from zero distance from neutral axis to what is the total uh, distance it is x there is a assumed value of a neutral axis then the actual variation is stress stress multiplied by d for this is of course this is for rectangular beam that i am doing okay this for rectangular beam breadth multiplied b into dy is nothing but your area stress multiplied by area is going to give you force that stress if i integrate from 0 to x then i get my cc this is from your actual variation now what is the variation in your rectangular stress block we have found that alpha 1 f prime c beta 1 x multiplied by b because this stress is acting over the entire cross section now what we are looking at if this my hand is my cross section stress is acting over the entire width of the cross section so that is why i need to multiply this stress uh, by b which is your width of your cross section so this is the equal so this and this should be equal that is your condition number 1 the net concrete compression from your actual stress distribution should be equal to the stress concrete contribution cc that is coming from your rectangular stress block parameters right so now you can ask me what is alpha 1 and beta I'll, i'll i'll come to that okay so if you do that then now what 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 we what we can see so this is what we have now what is fc can be expressed in terms of epsilon c how do we do that this is from your constitutive equation so what is fc if i know my epsilon c the strain so it is going to be f prime c multiplied by right epsilon c by epsilon prime c 2 into okay into 2 minus epsilon c by epsilon prime c the whole square this is your parabolic stress strain curve relationship so this stress can be expressed in terms of your strain epsilon c now what is the epsilon c epsilon c is the strain that we assumed it at the top fiber or in other words if i express fc in terms of epsilon c epsilon prime c is anyway taken as 0.0024 concrete strength less than 40 meter pascal so then i can find out an expression alpha 1 beta 1 should be equal when you simplify that you will find that alpha 1 beta 1 is equal to this okay now let's go to the next one so what is another condition first condition is the concrete compression force from your parabolic or the actual stress variation should be equal to the assumed rectangular stress block variation right so that we have found out so from this if you do that you can find out this expression then once you do that if you simplify and do the integration for this uh, thing if fc is expressed in terms of epsilon, epsilon c then you can find that alpha 1 beta 1 is equal to this or alpha 1 can be expressed as 1 by beta 1 multiplied by this okay and of course the epsilon prime c for concrete strength less than 40 mega pascal we take that as 0.002 okay which we have seen it in your constitutive equation sorts in the material chapter also right so then again cc uh, can be expressed as this so that is there okay right? now let us see that is your actual variation okay so this is what we said this using this we can express this now what is the next condition criteria 2 should be basically the location of this resultant force the resultant force should also be same between the two systems now i am comparing system 1 and system 2 both of them should give you same resultant force 
And what is the next condition? The location of this resultant also should be same. Now let us look at how this uh, location of the resultant can be found. Okay. Now this is your actual variation. Okay. This is your assume assume rectangular block variation. Okay, so let's look at these both these cases. Now, what is that we are trying to find out? This location of your y bar should be equal to this distance. Okay, now how do we get that y bar? Uh, for this is basically simple uh, integration. So you can find out the centroid for uh, any shape, right? So from your uh, strength of material uh, uh, calculations, how do you find this is the shape that I'm giving you for that shape? How do you find your centroid? So what is that we do? We do the integration. So we know that the CC is nothing but FC B into Y. So this is B dy is your integration. So you know the centroid. Basically, you take the moment of all these forces. If I take this as small dy, if I calculate this, what would be the FC multiplied by B into dy? It will be your force. Now I'm taking moment of this force about the neutral axis. So this is your neutral axis, right? So B into dy multiplied by stress and that I am taking moment. Okay, so this is basically a moment that divided by your force will give me your y bar. So this is from your strength of material approach. For any shape, you should be able to get your centroid. Okay, so the centroid we are getting y bar. Now this centroid should be equal to the centroid that what I am getting from your assumed equivalent rectangular stress block. So now you can see CC is going to be acting at a distance of a by 2 because it's a rectangle. Where is the centroid of the rectangle? Rectangle centroid is going to be right at the middle. So that distance is basically half of this depth that what I've taken. That is A by 2. But what we are interested in is from the neutral axis. So from the neutral axis, what is that you have taken? This is going to be your x. Okay. So this distance is nothing but x minus A by 2 or A by 2 is nothing but beta 1 x by 2. So this is the next condition. So again, when you express Fc in terms of your epsilon c and if you simplify the process, you will find an expression for your beta. Okay. Now, previously we found out one equation. What is that? If you go back, we found out alpha 1 beta 1 is equal to this. Or in other words, alpha 1 is basically 1 by beta 1 multiplied by this. If I fix the value of your epsilon c, and epsilon prime c is already given. So I can find out alpha 1 in terms of beta. So I got this. Now I directly got another expression for your beta 1 as a function of epsilon c and epsilon prime c. Again, what is epsilon prime c? We take it as 0 0.002. And epsilon c, you are going to assume whether it is 0 0.001 or 0 0.002 or 0 0.0035. So for the assumed value of our epsilon c, I can get beta 1. Right. Once I get beta 1, again I go back and plug it in this and I get my alpha 1. Once alpha 1 and beta 1 are found out for any given neutral axis, I can get this CC. Once again alpha 1 and beta 1 is found out, a neutral axis is found, I also know the location of CC. So it becomes very easy for me to integrate for any assumed strain at the top compression fiber. Now I know what are the alpha 1 and beta 1 parameters. Once I find alpha 1 and beta 1, I can find out my CC and I can also find out where is the location of CC, right? Again, once epsilon C is known, neutral axis depth is known, my curvature is strain divided by the neutral axis. My moment resistance will come from the location of your CC, like what we have done. So in this way, we can find out. So now why are we doing this converting the actual stress distribution to a uh, equal and rectangular stress distribution is because the shape of your concrete uh, stress curve in compression is going to keep changing depending upon what level of strain that what we are taking for top fiber in compression, right? So that is the reason I should be able to convert that into a simplified form of an equal and rectangular block. Then only I can do moment curvature calculations for 
assumed strain at the top of i am going to keep changing my epsilon c for each epsilon c i am going to find one moment and one curvature then only i can get the entire moment curvature behavior that is the reason okay now for steel also we have seen that we are going to assume what kind of behavior for both compression and tension i am going to take this elastic perfectly plastic okay so this is fs epsilon s and you know that this is fy and this is going to be your prop set strength and what is this this is going to be your 200 gigapascal elastic modulus okay so this is fy let's say for uh, 500 grade it is going to be 500 okay 500 megapascal now for 500 megapascal what is your uh, yield strain epsilon y is nothing but 0.0025 not, not and it is going to rupture at about uh, a 15 percentage of strength okay or 0.15 strength okay so this is the elastic perfectly plastic that relationship that i put so we going to solve the problem so this is only the procedure okay so how do we do our moment curvature analysis we choose a value of for your epsilon c that is the top strain okay and then we assume value for your x because unless i assume value for x i cannot find out the strain uh, at different levels right and then once you do that then i can also calculate stress across a cross section once i know the stress across a cross section i can calculate the concrete force and compression and steel force and tension and if i have to satisfy equilibrium condition what is the equilibrium condition concrete contribution and compression should be equal to the steel contribution in tension so c should be equal to t that is the condition so the assumed value of x should satisfy that c should be equal to t this is the equilibrium condition once it is done So then i can calculate moment and curvature for one value of epsilon c now i have to change like i said epsilon c is going to start from 0.00005.001.002.002 0 0.002 0 0.035 0.035 0.035 0.035 like that finally we will go to stop when epsilon c becomes epsilon c u what is the epsilon c u that we have taken 0.035 again different codes takes different values of ultimate compression okay right so that is what we going to do okay so now if c is equal to t if the condition is not satisfied either we have to increase or decrease the assumed neutral axis depth okay that way we find so in this uh, procedure your sectional details will be given to you right and uh, your uh, concrete strength will be given and the amount of steel that is in the cross section is also given to you okay so b is given d is given amount of steel is given concrete strength is given the grade of steel is given so for that particular cross section with the particular dimensions we are calculating moment curvature behavior like this so what is the procedure again assume value of top strain epsilon c and assume value for your uh, x and then calculate c and t if c is equal to t then your equilibrium condition is satisfied so assume the value of x is correct then go ahead and calculate moment resistance and curvature so the unknown quantities are only x m u and epsilon s and f s okay right so this is for uh, moment curvature the procedure for moment curvature analysis right now let us look at uh, how uh, we can uh, do the analysis uh, and how the procedure uh, on more in a detailed way so this is your cross section that i have taken as i have told you this as will be given to you similarly v will be given to you depth will be given to you what is the cover for this longitudinal bar also will be given to you now what we are really doing is we are fixing let's say at a very small strain of 0.0014 again i go back why is that we are doing this if you go back in compressive uh, thing we are taking like this okay and let's see epsilon c right and this is going to be your point not not two which is the epsilon point c right i am choosing now one value which is basically let me take that okay let's say a very very small value this is basically what is that value that's a first value point triple zero one four see so why is that i'm taking i'm starting from zero the initially the section is straight and it is going to keep rotating like this so when it is rotating only small magnitude the strain at the top is going to be very small so this is your concrete compression at the top fiber which is like here very small 
okay but again what is your ultimate condition when this train value reaches 0.0035 it is going to reach failure right so you take this now for this assumed value i am going to fix some value for x okay so that is what we are going to do then what is it we do again we go and i do the calculation for first point i get one moment and one curvature now what is it i am doing i am going and choosing next value which is 0.0075 then i repeat the entire process like what we have discussed previously then i get another moment and another curvature so i get this point okay now what you can see the section now initially goes like it rotated slightly again further it is rotating right so then i go ahead and choose next value which is 0.0015 so this is somewhere here 0.0015 okay so this is 0.0015 and this is 0.0075 right so now this point what is the epsilon c so you know that it is equal to 0.002 okay so like that i consider different top compressive fiber strain and i do the analysis so now you see when do we, when do i stop when this value becomes 0.0035 which we have taken that as a failure strain for concrete in compression right so uh, this way we can see that again this is your curvature the curvature value is going to keep increasing okay as i apply more and more so for this is actually what we are doing is a strain controlled analysis okay so we do this is the way we generate your moment curvature uh, behavior for a rectangular cross section of a known dimensions and knows known uh, amount of steel and known concrete um, strength okay right now so we can in fact what we can see here is uh, this is where you are going to have yielding okay we will uh, run the example problem also and then it will become very clear to you okay now if you look at this entire thing uh, can be this this entire thing can be taken as pretty much like a linear okay after cracking it in fact it can be taken this as a bilinear approximation so up to this yielding actually we can take that as actually almost linear to yielding of course after cracking there will be a small reduction but the steel will come into picture and it will give that it will not they let the stiffness to reduce that much okay now also you see that when the moment at yielding if you look at it it is this is going to be our ultimate trend okay m u ultimate and this is your moment at yielding m y we see m y is nearly same as that of your m u okay hence uh, you can see that the moment at yield is only slightly lower than ultimate moment capacity hence the behavior is practically linear for most range of moment okay and uh, that's why what we are doing when we do the analysis actually what we do is a linear elastic analysis okay so uh, the calculated moment demand for load case based on elastic analysis is actually we make sure that uh, what are the bending moment that we are de determining whatever the dmy that what we are calculating or mu that what we are calculating should be much higher than the bending moment that what we are getting from your linear elastic analysis okay so with this what why we are interested in moment curvature is now if i start changing your as or changing your concrete strength then i can compare the behavior between the two cases and i can see which parameter is giving me the desired performance okay so in this way for the entire range of performance can be calculated okay so that is the advantage with your uh, moment curvature analysis okay so again we'll solve through an example and it will become very clear but uh, you can uh, take this but this is the procedure okay for determining the moment curvature analysis now let us see um depending upon uh, whether the steel is yielding when concrete reaches its ultimate strain now again what is the concrete ultimate strain we are going to do when concrete reaches a strain of 0.0035 in compression that is what we call that as a failure condition so when concrete reaches its failure condition we can classify the failure bits okay so let us see how we do that okay so again 
So this is a simple beam that we have taken uh, and for with a generic load of uh, uniformly distributed load and point load and you get your bending moment like this and at this particular cross section you get a bending moment and then what we are doing is for this bending moment i am taking the section and i am i want to make sure that the chosen breadth depth and the amount of steel is adequate okay so that's what we do now usually in is code we do the analysis only for the top fiber having a strain of 0.0035 okay when we do that analysis we can also calculate what is the strain in this level of steel now as we've seen when concrete reaches its failure strain it is not going to give you any warning it is going to fail all of a sudden right so before this concrete reaches its point 0035 we need to calculate the level of strain in the steel and make sure that that strain is going to be higher than the yield strain now what is the yield strain for an elastic perfective plastic for fy fy grade of 500 my epsilon y is point not not 25 okay similarly for fy uh, 415 it is going to be point 00207 okay so you can calculate so uh, this is your first condition okay so if this is the first condition is nothing but your balanced failure how do we define that as a balanced failure is when concrete reaches its failure strain of 0.0035 in compression steel is also has reached uh, just to reach its yielding or in other words both concrete and steel reaching their failure strain simultaneously so if you choose a amount of steel in such a way that if this is happening this kind of failure is called as balanced failure or the amount of steel that what you provided for this section is called as a balanced reinforcement and you are inducing a failure condition where concrete is reaching its failure strain of 0.0035 and steel is reaching its failure strain of 0.0025 or fe5 or in other words it's reaching its yield strain when steel is reaching its yield strain that is what we define that as failure you know though we know that the steel can really uh, undergo a in fact steel should make sure that it is going to be higher than your yield strain okay next condition is tension failure now the next one when concrete is reaching its epsilon cu of 0.0035 now the level of strain at the steel has to be much greater than epsilon y this is the desired failure mode okay this is the desired failure mode okay we always want to make sure that steel is going to first reach yielding before it concrete fails in compression the reason is even though steel yields it is not going to fail abruptly it is going to stretch like a rubber band okay it is going to keep stretching and it is going to give you a lot of warning before concrete reaches its failure strain so this is a desired very all the design codes want your sections to be designed to have a tension failure under reinforced failure okay that means the amount of steel or what you are going to put is going to be less than the balanced condition uh, reinforcement okay if you do that you will make sure that the steel at the tension is going to reach yielding you can also have another condition steel may not reach yielding and concrete will first reach its failure strain this is called as an over reinforced failure mode of course we don't want that because we have seen it in that cylinder test right when concrete reaches compression it's a complete disintegration there is no warning so this is a undesired failure mode in fact most of the codes prohibit uh, you from designing the beams under flexion for concrete columns it's a different thing because columns are compression members where you are allowed to have this over reinforced failure mode also depending upon because the columns are compression members okay they are also So we have to make sure that the column undergoes some significant rotation before it fails in uh, compression. Okay, so these are the three failure modes. So uh, depending upon the amount of steel that I put, I can control the failure mode. The steel should reach its yielding before concrete fails compression. Right. So this is again in nutshell what happens for different failure modes in balanced failure. concrete crushes and steel also yields simultaneously okay so this concrete also reaches its failure strain crushing strain of 0.0035 similarly steel also reaches its yielding strain okay if i choose a reinforcement if this kind of failure is happening then uh, this is a balanced reinforcement 
In fact, this failure mode is also brittle because again, you know, when concrete uh, reaches, you know, steel is just yielded. It is not giving you that stretching. Okay. So this is not followed by IS code. It's not recommended. You need to put reinforcement always less than your balanced reinforcement ratio. Now, next condition is tension mode. This is what we need to make sure. When concrete reaches 0.035, we need to make sure that the strain in the tension steel should be much greater than that of your epsilon y. So that is why the code gives you epsilon y is not as 0.025 for Fe2, Fe500 that what we are talking about. Code will make sure that it is going to be epsilon y as per IS code is going to be 0.002 plus 0.87 Fy by ES. So you will find that this value is much higher than your actual elastic plastic value. Why? The code wants absolutely the steel to reach at least this level, which is much higher than your actual yielding. Okay, so code wants you to be really sure that your strain is reaching that level of strain and you design an under reinforced failure mode. Okay, so this is going to give sufficient amount of warning and this is the one that is adopted by all the design codes. Okay, the next condition is your over reinforced or compression control failure. Where when concrete is reaching its point 0035, steel strain is not yielded. So if you go back uh, to your uh, elastic perfectly plastic curve, okay. Now if you see that this is this, okay. This is your Fy, right? Now what we are saying here is. We are somewhere here, epsilon t, which is less than your epsilon y. Epsilon y is somewhere here. Okay. In fact, IS code designed F A F epsilon y is somewhere here. Okay. So you'll find that the strain in the steel is less than your yield strain. Okay. This is epsilon y, right? And this is a brittle mode of failure, and the code does not allow you to design this output. Each code is going to restrict the amount of steel that what you're going to put in such a way that you're not going to get this condition. Okay, so that is your limiting reinforcement and all this thing that we will discuss uh, in the coming parts of the module. Okay, so to summarize this uh, part of the module, we have discussed the behavior of RC member under flexion, and we also derived the relationship between moment and curvature. Okay, so curvature is nothing but your M by EI. Okay. Uh, for a reinforced concrete, the E is not going to remain constant. Depending upon the amount of curvature, you see that though we approximate that as a linear, but E is going to keep reducing. And we also talked about how to derive the equivalent stress block parameters. And we also talked about procedure for calculating your moment curvature analysis. And finally, we also discussed different types of failure mode. And all the codes for flexure, they want the beams to be having under reinforced or a tension control failure mode where the steel should reach yielding before concrete reaches its failure strength of 0 0.035. Okay, so in the next class, I think we will uh, um, solve this uh, problem, how to do this moment curvature analysis for a singly reinforced section, then it will become very clear. Okay, so with that, I thank you for your patient listening and attending. So we'll see you in the next part of this module. Right, thank you.